construction. We can't wait to see you. Raymond Temple. Today is Wednesday, September 30th. Today we begin or we continue our tour through the NPR to talk about lunch and breakfast. So let's start with breakfast. If you get here at 745, you will be coming in through the NPR doors there will be a staff member there ready to take your temperature and give you hand sanitizer as you begin to make your way to the breakfast line. For lunch, you'll be lining up here just like you've done in the past or for some of you for the very first time. You will then approach here and show your lunch number. From there, you're going to walk out of the out of the opposite door. And hi, Carlos. Remember that we have these arrows throughout campus, which means that you're keeping your social distance. Do not move until the arrow in front of you is open. And here is a red line. It does mean stop, but here for the lunch area, it also means you are about to enter a mask break zone. That's right. Still haven't figured out how to eat with your mask on. So once you are in this lunch area that is marked by that red line, you are allowed to remove your mask. I hope that you are noticing the tape and ask yourself, what does that mean? And I hope you answer it. It means that one person can sit there. As you can tell, we have spaced out the areas in which you are able to sit during lunch. The classrooms will be sitting together, spaced out, and you will use these stickers to know where exactly you should be sitting. It's important more than ever to remember our rules that existed even before pre-COVID. No sharing of food, definitely no throwing of food, and now, during COVID, we need to make sure you're facing all, all of you are facing the same direction. So wherever you see a tape, that's where you will be sitting, facing the same direction. And I'll sit down so you have a view of that. We have some brand new sails there to help us during these hot summer days. We have enough space for 60 students to sit here at once with six feet of social distance. 
So that's a great thing. We well, won't have that many students here in the beginning, but we might have two or three classrooms, but I wanna be very clear. We cannot sit where we like right now. We need to stay in our own classes. And what we are naming classes are cohorts. So when we say cohorts need to be together and remain together, we are talking about your classroom. Your classroom is a cohort. After breakfast, if it's before eight o'clock, Mrs. Spencer will be asking you to walk the perimeter of this child care playground. Only if you finish breakfast before eight o'clock in the morning. Why? Because your teachers are not in their room yet. So you will be asked to walk, not talk. You guessed it. Because of social distancing, it's not a walk and talk. It's just a morning stretch. Maybe do some of our breathing that we've been learning with Mr. Goss. Thinking about what a great day you're going to have. Thinking about how long it's been since you've been here at your school. And just, you can even maybe do some hopscotch here. While you keep walking, this is for breakfast. For all of you who are here for breakfast, it will open at 7.45 a.m. And if you finish before eight, you will be asked to walk this circle. Now for lunch, you will have, you will be assigned as a cohort. What's a cohort? Your class. You will be assigned, each cohort will be assigned a zone. What zone is this? Zone two. What zone is the main playground? Zone one. And what zone is the field? Zone three. Sometimes we will have to use three zones. Sometimes we will only have two zones. It depends how many students are in each grade level and how many students are in each cohort. And cohort means class. So that's the end of our tour today. We talked about breakfast and we talked about lunch. And we talked about walk and talk, cohort, and of course, I'm sure you all know that before breakfast and before lunch, you will need to wash your hands. All right, scholars, now let's go to our morning announcements. All right, so good morning now for the announcements. We are going to begin with Rule number four. The Energy Bus by John Gordon comes five ways to love your passengers. Number one, make time for them. When you love someone or something, you spend time with them. You nurture your relationship with them. And while you are with them, it's important to be present with them. Be engaged in the present moment. Number two, listen to them. We all just want to be heard, so listen to each other. We're talking about really sitting down and listening with your heart and caring about what they have to say. Empathy is the key. For instance, when you ask someone how they're doing, an easy way to show how you are listening is to actually wait for the answer and make eye contact. Number three, recognize them. We don't mean trophies or some awards to be recognized Words are powerful. If you appreciate someone, let them know. Number five, bring out the best in them. The most important thing to do when you love your passengers is to want the best for them. You want them to be successful and happy. Thank you, Ave. 
want to thank everyone that is still interested in running for student council. I did receive lots of emails, lots of entries, your posters, and your speeches. What's next? Dr. Salas or someone from Raymond Temple will be reaching out to you to help you polish up. That means write, edit, improve your speech if it needs improving. And I will also uh, be reaching out to you so that you can come collect your large poster board to make your final poster the, once I have approved what you submitted. So let me say that again. The next step is that you will be receiving a phone call from Dr. Salas or a staff member Thursday and Friday, and we are going to be your buddies and help you to finish your writing and also give you your poster. So all you have to do now is just sit back and wait until we reach out to you. Want to remind everybody that you are on a modified schedule all of this week. Today is Wednesday, so every Wednesday, even after this week, you should be done by 10 a.m., but all this week you are finishing early. And now for our word of the day. Our word of the day is author. Author is the word of the day. Author is a noun, and it means it is a writer of a book, an article or a report. A synonym for author is a writer. An antonym is an illustrator. My sentence using the word author, John Gordon is the author of the energy bus. John Gordon is the author of the energy bus. Here's a picture of our word of the day, author. Okay, fifth grade, still waiting for your Pledge of Allegiance video. That's it for today. Have a wonderful day of learning. Bye-bye. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic for which it stands. One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.